Okay, so as you discussed earlier on, there's uh, essentially two main components to a radar system. We have the console, in this case the Sur 4000 console, and you have an antenna, which in this case is the 350 megahertz hyperstacking antenna. And you have a whole lot of accessories, um, cable for communication between the two, and a cart to deploy it. You don't necessarily need to use the cart, the cart just makes life a lot easier. So in situations, there are situations where you might want to take the antenna out and use it out of the cart. So putting the whole lot together is very, very simple. You've also got, of course, batteries, two batteries. Uh, two batteries will be enough for about eight hours to ten hours work. Um, and you have battery charger and manual sunscreen, sun filter, uh, sunscreen. Um, and that's about it. So putting the thing together, the important thing, the most important thing to note when you put the cart together. So for transport. You might want to take the wheels off from time to time if you don't have a. Uh, you can't get it in and out the doors. Yeah, so there's a trick. There's a trick to that to take. So the trick to get it through a normal door is you take the front left and the rear right wheel off, and you ride it through like like that. That's the easiest way to get it through. Uh, unfortunately, the rugged this rugged cart doesn't fit through a standard door. Um, or you can just take two left wheels off. So the important thing really is what I want to show you is this is where guys will damage this is on the actual wheel you'll see on the axle there's a little pin here that pin gets pressed in and out and on the inside here there is a little ball bearing and that ball bearing locates on a little lip inside here you need to when you seat the wheels you need to press the pin in when you put the the axle in. So the axle goes in, you press the pin in, and then you locate the wheel. That little ball bearing now holds the wheel in place against the lip. It is possible to get the wheel on without putting the pin in by banging it in. What it does is it damages that lip, and after three or four or five months, you bend the lip so much that it won't hold the wheel in. You'll be pushing the cart, and the wheels will just start floating and fall off. And that's pretty annoying to have to walk along and keep the wheel back on each time as you go. So look after those. It's a small part, but it's, they're very expensive. So that's all pin here. To take them off, of course, you just press the pin in, slide them out. And it's a little ball bearing there. So that's, these are ridiculously expensive for what you get. To, it's a sealed bearing, so you replace that whole unit. So when you damage this little lip, you're looking at about 4,000 Rand to replace each one. 16,000 Rand, which you've damaged four. Sorry, there we go. So you'll see it's got a flat, it's got a flat edge. So you line the flat edge up, up with the flat edge there. You can only go in one way, then you just put the pin in, and it's, now you feel it's located. The second thing is, sometimes you'll hear these things squeak a little bit. Don't oil them, never oil them. Because you put oil in here, just all it does is build, it creates a grit, it creates a grinding paste and it destroys it. Um, if you want to put something, anything in there, you can use graphite powder. But in, in essence, if you look after it, you shouldn't have to put anything in. The bearings are, are pretty robust. Um, so that's the important thing with the wheels. The second thing is, when you run the cart, you want the cart to be as close to the, the antenna to be as close to the ground as possible. So we have straps here that we can adjust the center, this capsule. So how you would normally do it, if you're working on uh, grass or, or uh, even soils or whatever, you can run it just flat on the ground like that. If you're working on tar, because tar is quite abrasive, uh, or any really abrasive surface, normally tar, what you would do is you put your hand underneath there, finger finger width, about a centimeter and a half, and you just pull up the slack on each of these, like that. You do the same on the other side, and you'll see that the, the capsule will sit about a centimeter, centimeter and a half off the ground. That just saves the capsule. 
Capsules are replaceable uh, if you do eventually wear through them. Um, and if you give me enough advance warning, we can get one at a very good. I might even have a spare or whatever. But in general, if you run this over grass and stuff like that, you can run it on the ground. They'll last forever. This is pretty, pretty durable. What you don't want to do is pull the thing up here and have the antenna that high above. And the reason being is then you get backscatter. So you get information coming from trees and rocks on the side of you. If there's a building, you'll get backscatter from the building. Um, you, you even get backscatter if you have uh, um, uh, steel cap boots, for example, things like that. Um, so run it as close to the ground as possible. That's a general rule of thumb. Um, you can put duct tape on the ground. You can. You can. You can actually put. You know. You can repair them if you, if you get a hole in it. Eventually, you can repair it as long as you don't use anything metallic. Mm -hmm. So you can use. Uh, you can use PVC, just a sheet of uh, what's a perspex, for example, mm. um, thick, thick plastic, as long as it's not uh, metallic, as long as it has nothing metallic in it. Um, and again, you want to keep the antenna as close to the ground as possible. The closer the, to the ground, the better the data. Um, that's just holding these straps onto here. So the straps are replaceable. These these clips, just be a little careful. These these clips are. That's probably the weak point in the system. Um, again, I keep I normally keep stock of these, so if you have a problem, I can I can replace them for you. Um, but uh, yeah, at this, there, there's a little screw underneath here. Um, sometimes these get a bit loose, and then just make sure the screw doesn't fall out. Just tighten them. It's like it's any equipment. You just want to make sure that everything's tight from from time to time. Just take a screwdriver and make sure everything's tight. These little these little goodies here have no purpose other than to fill the hole. The, the thread that's in here. If you want to put a differential GPS on the system, okay, or a GPS antenna on the system, um, you can build a tripod so that you want your uh, GPS antenna to sit over this, uh, the antenna of the GPS to sit over the center of this end of this antenna. So you can build a tripod uh, or just a, you know, that's basically what these mountings are for. It's an accessory mount. Um, and the radio from the differential GPS doesn't interfere with the... Uh, it it normally, you should, no, it won't. Right. Um, no, you can log, so you, you log the GPS data on here. Mm. So you only need the, the antenna. Yeah, but the differential for RTP... Oh, is... oh um, I, I have actually heard just recently about some interference, mm. but you, but it wasn't with the radar, no, it wasn't with the radar, it was with the EM system. So oh, the answer is probably no. Uh, yeah, this, you shouldn't get any interference. Mm. Um, right, so the next thing, next step is to put in the mast. Just plug in the mast. You can see it's got a little slot here that this fits into. When they're new, there we go. All right, that's it. Um, so the whole system is designed to be able to pull apart so that um, it makes it easier to transport. Um, these two here serve no purpose other than as an accessory, uh, place to bolt on accessories. So you can either put, some people put a cage on here, like a water bottle cage, if you're in the field, or put a paint can in there for marking stuff. Um, you know, just, it's just little places that you can actually bolt stuff. Um, these two things on the side here are also for that. You can put a cool drink in there if you want, or, <laughs> or a spray, a spray can. Um, uh, yeah, you actually, well, these are shielded, antenna shielded, so you can, you can get stuff close and on the top, just not on the side, you know, if you prefer it not to. Um, the other thing to look out for is, so when you when you put the console on, um, you would normally, this is, I don't know if you want to get that, there's a little a little screw here, a tightening screw, so you would loosen that screw. Don't then, take it off. Don't take it all away, just loosen it a little bit. There's a little pin here, you pull this pin out like that, and then the whole thing rotates up. Yeah. And so on the left hand side here, you've got little holes for the pin. So you just choose the right angle for you, and it's determined by your height and where the sun is normally. Put the pin in, and then you just secure it over here, and just tighten it up on that side. Mm. Um, yeah, people tend to take that out and, and it falls out, and they lose the, um, the washer. Uh, it's not a big deal, but uh, it's just annoying, it doesn't work properly. Um, 
the trick is just uh, not the trick. One thing to watch is just that these things are kept tight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it starts to vibrate and it makes it hard to read while you're moving and you don't know why and why it's not working properly. These just need to be tight. We have these ports here. First one is the power power port where the uh, power cable goes in. The uh, sorry no, that's for external power. This this antenna gets its power from from the console. But, um, so you can put the external power in here. This is a control cable, which is this guy over here. <coughs> so I forget which end goes in where the blue end goes in there. Thank you. You'll see on the on the cables there's a little GSSI embossed thing that always faces the front so that you know you've got the pins lined up and you just screw it on firmly. You'll feel it, you screw it until it doesn't screw anymore. Uh, if you're not using the sorry, if you're using the cart, we will plug that cable over here. This cable here which goes to an encoder in the back wheel here, a distance encoder which measures the distance, but it also controls when the unit collects data. Mm. So if the wheel's not moving, the unit won't collect data. It'll, it'll, it'll pulse, but it won't actually say it will collect data. Mm. So only when the wheel moves does it collect data. Um, so that will, we will plug into the survey wheel. Mark is if you have an external marker, um, this antenna can be used outside of this, in which case you'd have an external um, survey wheel, which would go in there, and you would have a marker switch that goes in there, so you can actually put marks in the data if you needed to. Uh, the accessory port, we have various accessories that go with some of the antennas. I'm not going to pull it out, it's just a plug. Um, and you have a, a, you can either put a, a line track system on, which protects live cables, um, and is that where the GPS goes? Uh, no, GPS goes in here. So the GPS needs to have an RS-232 or serial port uh, um, out. But you can use a RS-232 to USB um, dongle. This is USB? Yeah, no, that's, G that's RS-232. Oh, okay. So RS-232. It's a 9-pin RS-232. Oh, okay. So, and your GPS just must be uh, standard NMEA GGA string, but it's all in there. It's in, in other words, any any uh, GPS other than some of these small garments they have a proprietary string, uh, but uh, any of the bigger garments that GPS maps, uh, trimble and all those things, all have a, it's a very standard string. Um, right, so yeah. next thing to do, thank you. <coughs> Plug this in here. When we plot the data, as we plot every single point below the center of the antenna, we're plotting essentially below where this cable fits in. So your data point is being plotted there. The center of the cart is here. You can see those aren't lined up. So I need to position the antenna there put the foam. This, the, which way? Uh, long side. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this system with the dual frequency antenna, it actually says top and front, oh. much easier. There we go. All right, so there we go. So the main thing to look at is that your cable is in line with these two points here. Then you know that you're taking the data, you're measuring the data in the right place. Yeah, just once we, Sorry, pick yeah. a foam in the front, then a foam at the yeah, back. Yeah, there we yeah. go. I think it's probably reversible that way, but... Yeah. Because well, so, once we put the capsule on, you can't see where the center of the... Of the of the antenna is and you have to use these marks. Right, so that we just plug in. Yeah, there we go. I mean, the cables should all be... Yeah, they, you can't fit one into the wrong, you can't put it into the wrong port. It, it doesn't it, go easily. It doesn't go, it doesn't go. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, so those are the only two cables you need connected here. Um, as I said, you can put external power if you're using it with a different console. But from this one, it actually the 
It's got these little uh, spring clips here. Essentially what it does is as you pull this clip, it expands a piece of rubber that just grabs on the, on the back of the mounting plate. So you have the handles down, and we line up those two holes there with the pins, slot them on, and give it a firm press, and it's on. Nice and easy. Slots in the back here to route the cables through so you don't crimp the cables. When you first start using it, these, the, the rubber seal on the bottom half is quite expanded, so it's a bit tricky just to get it on. But after a few times that you've used it, it actually fits on really nicely. The whole idea is that you don't get dust inside. That little clip fits underneath there. Just like okay, that. so that thing goes down and that goes. You know, the reality is, is that that antenna is sealed anyway, so if you get dust inside, it's not a big issue. It's just nice to keep everything clean if you can. Um, oh, there is a trick. If you're over, running over rough ground and there's rocks and things like that, what you can do, or um, felt grass, um, what you can do, even though the front end is beveled at the bottom of slightly, you can pull the front up a bit, you know, just like this. So you pull the front up one notch just to, just to angle the antenna slightly, this will run over obstacles slightly better. And that doesn't affect the gear? No. Nah. You know, in theory it does because you're now projecting data slightly ahead of you, um, but the angles are so small that you won't see the difference in the data. So the battery can only fit in one way. Pins first, and it's got a little groove in the battery here. And there's a pin inside that uh, runs inside this groove, so you can't put the battery in upside down. See that? Single pin. Oh, that's to pull the battery out. So, if you want to come around this side, so you just put it in, slot down, slide it in, press it until it clips. Here it's clipped in. These batteries are standard for some of the other systems that don't have this little clip. So, it's got like a little spring loaded thing. So, the other ones we have to use a tag to pull them out. And then you can just seal the battery in. So this is IP67 uh, certified, so it basically means you can spray it, with, once all the ports are closed, you can spray it with a hose or submerge it to one meter underwater. <coughs> Don't do it, uh, but it's, it's very rugged, as long as all the ports are closed. Are you saying we can work in the rain? Uh, yeah, you, you can work in the rain, just don't work with standing water because you get reflections off the surface and you get very little energy penetration and you're just sort of wasting your time. Uh, but certainly, I mean, if it's, if it's a drizzle and you know, have to work in the rain if you want to do, no reason. Um, and then it's a case of just powering it up and hopefully it starts. <laughs> 